I uh, want to discuss a couple basic things about the idea of architecture to begin with here. You know, in terms of architecture, if the object you're trying to create is simple, and you can see the whole thing all at one time, and it's not likely to change, like a log cabin or a computer program, then you don't need architecture. All you need is a tool, like an axe or a compiler or something, and some raw material, like a forest or some data, and some time, then build log cabins, write programs. You don't need architecture uh, if, if you're producing something simple. On the other hand, however, if the object is complex and you can't see it in its entirety at one time, and it's likely to change considerably over time, like a 100-story building, or an enterprise, now you need architecture. In short, the reasons you need architecture are complexity and change. Now, I, I, I'm, telling, I'm making some observations here, including a discussion of the foreseeable future, or the, uh, the, uh, the information revolution, the movement in the in, in information age, and the characteristics of the information age that we know about, that we can, account, we can see, uh, already, right now, have to do with complexity and change. I really don't, in, intuitively, we see the complexity increasing dramatically and a rate of change increasing dramatically. The time that we have to respond tends to be short, shorter and shorter and shorter, and the, and the, the uh, issues we have to deal with the, tend to be more and more complex. In any case, uh, architecture is, if you're going to have to deal with complexity and change, you are going to deal with architecture. In terms of complexity, if you can't describe it, whatever it is you're going to create, then you can't create it. I don't care what that happens to be. If somebody hadn't figured out how to describe uh, buildings, we'd have, be having this meeting in a log cabin. Or if somebody hadn't just figured out how to describe airplanes, I'd have rolled in here in a covered wagon last night. If somebody hadn't figured out how to describe uh, um, uh, automobiles, uh, some of you guys would, roll, you know, showed up on a horse. If somebody hadn't described how to describe, com uh, figured out how to describe computers, you'd be adding up columns and numbers with pencils and paper. Actually, it'd be worse. You'd be moving little donuts on an abacus, or, you know, uh, you know to trying to calculate things. Uh, so if you can't describe whatever it is you're trying to create, you, you, you can't create it. In terms of change, if you do not retain the descriptive representations after you create them or if you never created them in the first place and you need to change the result and implementation you only have three options now I'm just going to tell you what the three options are in the interest of time one thing you can change the object we can talk about an enterprise or a building or an airplane or whatever you can just change it and see what happens but that's just high risk if you change the building and change the wrong thing you could lose the entire building in a heartbeat so you know it's high risk and change it to see what happens or you can reverse engineer the the architectural constructs of the building that to describe what, uh, what is, where the strength members are and where the uh, the uh, electrical uh, uh, wires are are or where the pipes are flowing you can uh, you can reverse engineer it by just uh, going going around with the uh, drills and tape measure and trying to recreate the descriptive representations that takes time and costs money or you can scrap the whole thing and start over again just start start over again so one way or another, you are going to describe the architecture. You're going to have to recreate or create or recreate the descriptive representations. If you want to change the object once you get the thing instantiated or once you get the thing created or built. So if you want to deal with complexity and change, you are going to deal with architecture. In fact, I, the, the challenge turns out to be, the, the challenge is, what is your strategy? Actually, this is not a technical strategy. The, the question chief is, what is your strategy for addressing orders of magnitude increases in complexity and orders of magnitude increase in the rate of change? You know, what, what, do you think this is not happening? No, no, this is happening. The question is, what are you going to do about it? I would just observe 7,000 years of history would suggest the only known strategy for addressing complexity and change is 
architecture. If the object that you're trying to create gets so complex you can't remember, you can't see how it works at the level of definition you is required to create it, then you have to write it down. You have to describe it. You have to do our, create the architecture. And if you want to change how the thing works, you start with what you wrote, have written down, architecture. So the key to complexity and change is architecture. The question turns out to be then what is architecture for enterprises? See, we know what architecture is for buildings. We know what architecture is for airplanes. We know what our architecture is for locomotives. We know what architecture is for all the tangible things that have been created through the, the formalization of manufacturing process over the uh, of the industrial age. So we know what architecture is for tangible things. The question is, what is architecture relative to enterprises? I spent 40 years of my life and fundamentally discovering that architecture for enterprises is identical to characteristics of the descriptive representations of an enterprise are exactly identical to the descriptive representations of any complex object. Uh, basically, the, the architecture is architecture is architecture. So, uh, but if you want to deal with complexity and change, and that, that I would just make the observation, it's even intuitively obvious that that's the nature of the game where it's going out into the foreseeable future. I don't think we're talking about the sweet by and by. I think we're talking about, you know, any time tomorrow morning kind of a thing. Any time to start to think about this and start to do something about it tomorrow morning is not too late to start. In any case, uh, just some thoughts on architecture. Thank you.